what would it take for you to even consider bringing on a new producer with no placement? It just has to be something that's gonna move me personally. Like, I don't, the money side is obviously in, enticing. You know, like if you, if you have a few placements and no publishing deal, and I know that we can walk in, get you a situation, and walk out with a check pretty much with little to no effort. But this business has never really been about strictly the money for me. Like obviously we needed to keep the lights on and survive, but I always want to work with people who want to be legendary. They would just want to be here. You know, 10 years deep, you want to be here still making records in different genres and things like that. So that kind of fire, along with something creative that I haven't really heard before, is what will inspire me. You know, it's not a, placements are a great, a great thing, but they can be, they can deceive you because there's some people that we know who are super basic and they got a bunch of placements. But it's just about like, okay, when that sound is over, will they be able to switch up kicks and go in another, you know, direction? That's the, that's the real question. You know, it's not about the here and now. It's about ten years from now. You know, it's just it's a lot of young gunners that I like that haven't really gotten placement. So if I say their name, it wouldn't really ring a bell at all. But it's just you know, people who are trying to do it differently are who inspire. You know. Yeah, you don't have to be different to be great, by the way, but I just think that in order to cut through the amount of material that's out there now, because anybody with a laptop feels like they're producing that. So in order to bypass all of those people in the bedroom clogging up the pipeline, you've got to be able to do it different. Even if it comes down to the mix being better, to where it just sounds better coming out the speakers, the devil's always in the details.